So hello, hello everyone, welcome. If you've never been here to my small YouTube, YouTube podcast, when, welcome back and thank you. If you have been a returning viewer or a subscribe or and a subscribe viewer, thank you very much. My name is Isabel. I'm living in France and I'm knitting from France. I have three sons. I have three cats. Some say it's related. So you may see me around, you know, handling my cats who want to go out or come into because it's extremely cold today below freezing temperatures and I'm filming a little later in the day so there is a lot of sun coming um, pale winter sun I like that very much very dry weather but my cats don't like it too much so they go in and out quite often each day and I'm being their door manager right so I'm bringing you this uh, podcast, this uh, knitting podcast in English because I used to live in the United States, but that was 30 years ago and my talking English is gone, a lot gone, and I miss it. So I take this podcast also as an opportunity to practice my English. I started it last summer because I could not find one series that I'm having uh, on my channel, which is the Woolly News series, um, where I collect for two weeks, because I post in each series every other week, I collect um, what has caught my attention in the wool, fiber, crochet community, and uh, um, things that I have seen that have caught my attention. So it's it's a, not at all, I'm not a journalist, it's not an extensive review, it's my own take, what I have seen for the past two weeks. And every other week, I have my, uh, sorry, I have a cat hair somewhere, uh, I have my regular knitting adventures uh, series on a regular knitting podcast format, what I wear, what I'm working on, my acquisitions and everything. And I will start at the beginning of next year, so that's two weeks from now, uh, when I'm filming this, um, a new series about my yarn no by year. So the, this podcast is going to be live on December 24th, as every, I usually post on a Friday, so I film some time ahead in advance because I need time to film and edit and process the video. Um, so I upload it usually um, so that it goes out live on itself on Friday, my afternoon. So if you are Western from me, it's going to be during your Friday morning or late morning. And if you are Eastern from me, it's going to be during your Friday night. Uh, so I'm going to have a third series about my yarn, no by year. So next week, I've already filmed this video, is going to be why I'm doing this uh, project for the next year. And it's not at all a good resolution for the year, even though it looks like it. Yet it's not my type. I don't do that. Uh, but it's something I need to undergo because, you know, things have become crazy and out of hand. And with the YouTube podcast, I have many temptations that I have, you know, I have fallen into the rabbit hole of buying yarn and I, that needs to stop because it doesn't suit me. Uh, so next week is going to be all um, some kind of an overview of all the yarn I have at home and all the projects I have with that yarn and I need to get into knitting these projects that have been waiting for sometimes over two years. And uh, Friday, the, so that's going to be on Friday, Friday 31st, that this video is going to go live. And um, next uh, Tuesday, I think I've set it up for January 4th, um, I will uh, have a podcast about the guidelines or rules or regulations I'm uh, setting up for myself 
so that this project can last for a year or maybe over a year. Um, so, uh, and then I will check on, check in on a regular basis. I'm thinking maybe once a month. Uh, to see how this project is going, how I'm feeling, if I'm going strong on my no buy, uh, yarn no buy year, if I'm failing, uh, if I have to change a bit the guidelines because it's, you know, it's my project and if some of the guidelines do not suit me once I experiment them, maybe I need to change them. So, so I've set up another uh, playlist on my YouTube channel where I will be collecting these check-ins and uh, this project. So if this is of some interest to you, um, thank you for subscribing and maybe ring the notifications so that you get notified whenever I upload a video in you know whichever um, uh, playlist I choose to put them. And uh, uh, for today, it's going to be my last of the year knitting adventure. Um, so if this is, sounds good to you, please stay tuned. So uh, for today, I'm going to start with what I'm wearing. You have already seen that. It's the Scandinavian sweater. It's knitted in Derehon Natura Gilead. Uh, so this is the the beige light light beige is uh, poivre sel. So this is salt and pepper. This one is fusain. Fusain is the carbon um, uh, tip of a, a paper pen. So uh, uh, it's a dark, very dark brown. And the whiter color is a leftover from my uh, camel um, yarn. I knitted another sweater with. So, and you have it also here. This pattern is a free pattern on Ravelry. I will link it down below if, uh, if this is of some interest to you. Okay, so uh, I have prepared a few items I need, I need or want to talk about. And uh, uh, my current, I have no finished object. Uh, so that's, that's for that. And uh, uh, I have uh, two whips working projects. Um, one of them I'm not, I'm not going to talk about the, because I did not work on it. I had no time to work on it because I have worked on my second work in prog progress, which is, maybe that way, I do not know if the color is going to be better that way. Which, which is the, the uh, chunky fishbone sweater by Neringa Ruke. Uh, I'm knitting that in an unknown, there was no tags on it, uh, yarn I bought last year in the Pyrenees. It's a big, big chunky yarn. I'm knitting that with, with uh, five millimeter needles. Um, I like the pattern very much. So one, last time I talked about it, I was, you know, maybe here in the front. So it's knitted in pieces and sewn. And I like very much when a garment is sewn because, so this one is heavy enough and the color work with all the strands holds, um, hold the, the, the yoke here on my shoulders and it, the garment doesn't get deformed or modified over its own weight. Uh, and when you knit uh, with a heavier yarn, so, and when you knit in pieces and sew the pieces, I think the garment holds its shape it's on it by itself in a much better way. So um, since then I've knitted the back. So here is the back. I've knitted the color. So uh, I made it long. I think I'm going to wear it, you know, fold it uh, onto itself that way. And I made the right sleeve. Okay, so I've been, you know, uh, sewing also both sides so that I can see for the sleeve how it goes into. And, uh, you know, I like this pattern very much. I like the yarn. The yarn is sort of um, um, 
there are a, a bit of colors in the yarn. Uh, it's a bit tweedy, not very much tweedy, but a, a bit tweedy. It's not plied. Uh, maybe I have one thread here somewhere, I think. Uh, maybe I've, you know, I've, ah, okay, I've, I have all my uh, ends in for now, so I don't have the thread to show you. I, I thought I was feeling one inside. Anyway, doesn't matter. It's not plied, so it's a tweedy, uh, very, very cheap, rustic yarn. Um, so, um, yeah, with that beautiful green, that's also making me very happy. So, I think by tomorrow, tonight, or maybe to, in to, um, tomorrow night, the second sleeve is going to be done. Oops, sorry. And uh, uh, I will have a finished object. So, I'm not going to show my yellow sweater, the second Lawrence sweater. I haven't worked on it. So, you know, I'm a monogamous knitter. I cannot, I do not have enough time to have many projects that uh, I can pick up and make evolve uh, at the same time. So I dedicate my time to one and uh, I chose to dedicate my time to this, uh, the fishbone, the green fishbone sweater. My second work in progress, so, so it's going to be my third work in progress. I have just cast it on yesterday. And this, there is a little story to that. Um, the amazing Ami Palco was uh, running a call on her Instagram, on her Ravelry group. And I entered, it was about all the shawls. I entered with uh, the Elven shawl, then the Sotobosk shawl, and I had another one, I think. Uh, yeah, the Fresh Peony shawl. Uh, so I entered with uh, three shawls that I had been knitting over the course of the cal that was, you know, over almost a year. And I won. This is the ever, first time ever I won. I win something and in a cal. So her prize was a very beautiful pattern from, um, let me see, because I do not recall the name of the pattern. Okay, so uh, it's a pattern from um, Caroline uh, Holbrook, uh, who is in the United States, I think. And she has very, I will link down below, she has very, very beautiful stitch patterns for uh, that she offers. And uh, I, I chose the Highland uh, Twistle sweater. Thistle sweater. Maybe tell me how to pronounce that. I will run that in a, in a <laughs> so that I can uh, uh, see if I'm pronouncing that correctly or not. Uh, with a very delicate uh, lace pattern to the, on the yoke. Um, so uh, that was the first part of the prize and the second part of the prize was this absolutely wonderful project bag. So first time I win something, first time I'm, uh, I have a win in a cal, in a knit along. And this is my first ever project bag. I a real one. I have project bags. I use totes that I either I buy myself or you know you have in stores. This is what I use to put my knitting projects into. And this one is from the cocoon tree. It's blue. You know, most probably I mean Amy knew that blue was my black with this wonderful bright orange tassel. Very nice, very nice one that feels like silk. And I had already decided what, uh, so I received it last week, I think, what I was going to put into it. And uh, uh, I have forgotten to take the book with me, but I'm going to show you. So I, so this is a baby caston, <laughs> a baby, a very, very small. 
more cap capstone. I, I think I need it three rows. Mittens, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna stop here and go check the uh, my book. Uh, mittens uh, that I casted on when I brought my second son, Theo, arrived two days ago from the south of France where he is a PhD student. And he went, I took him to um, vaccination center so that he can have his third shot. So um, I casted on uh, the mittens there and uh, the yarn I have is from my Elvan shawl. So the base is gonna be the fog colorway from the Elvan shawl. It's a light creamy beige. And I have leftovers that I will, I'm not sure right now which color I'm gonna use where, but anyway, um, you know, there is uh, some kind of a dusty pink. There are more than that, but these, were, these are the ones I've, I chose to uh, go with the mittens. Uh, some kind of a bluish gray. So that's a, another cream white. Um, there is uh, a mossy green, there is a dark blue here, a dark blue here, and uh, a couple, yeah, this burgundy, brown burgundy one. And a couple other skins I have left from other projects or other yarns I bought. This is from the Zakami yarn. Not sure I'm going to use them. So uh, I'm going to interrupt here and I'm going to go get the book so that I show you which mittens I, I want to knit. Okay, so I hope I'm not too much uh, off, uh, off the screen. Um, so uh, the mittens I'm gonna knit are from my best knitted treasures. So that's the English version because she has both an English and uh, um, Swedish, I guess Swedish or Finnish, one of the European no Northern countries. I'm gonna check and I'm gonna write it down because already last time I didn't know. And so, okay. It's by Sidel uh, J. Hoivik. A beautiful book, beautiful book um, that I bought uh, as soon as I saw it. There were some left of left, and these are the Rosa at the ball. Uh, so very, this is a very very beautiful sweater. It's a bit complicated for me for now, but she has mittens um, that go with the sweater with. Um, the color work that is the same inspiration as for the sweater. So I'm going to make these mittens with um, the leftover from my Elvon shawl. And even though this is a baby caston, it's a caston nonetheless. So this is a work in progress. And I'm going to, you know, I, I have, I am, off of work this week. So this is why I'm filming a bit later than usual and you can see some of the sun. Uh, so I'm gonna travel this week for Christmas and I will be gone at uh, the end of the week and I will bring in my beautiful cocoon tree bag this project um, to knit if I have time because I will prefer to spend some quality time with my family and people I do not see very often. My parents, my sister-in-law and brother-in-law and my nephews, etc. So um, yeah, it's gonna come with me. It's gonna travel with me within France. I know Amy can't. She was supposed to go see her parents and I will be thinking of you, Amy, when I'm gonna bring this beautiful project back bag with me, um, traveling within France for uh, this end of, end of the year. Okay, so uh, along with my yellow Lawrence and sweater, these are the three uh, projects I have for now. Okay, so uh, uh, another news uh, I want to talk about, uh, maybe you recall, 
Um, I adopted the ship some time ago already, maybe it was in October, from Len Paysan. Len Paysan is a, a farm that is uh, in the center of France. So they raise sheep, they collect the yarn and they work with a mill uh, to make yarn and also they have a clo clothesline that is, you know, environmentally uh, with guidelines for environment and everything. So they have a label too. So um, I adopted a sheep from them and with uh, the adoption fee, well, oh, my lady cat is at the other window. So I'm going to go open to her because it's very, very cold outside. Okay, she's in safe and in the warm house. So with the adoption fee <clears throat> for the ship, uh, you were going to receive, I received an Afghan. It's a it's very big, very big one, very large one. That is knitted with the fleece of one ship. You see how big it is. It's very warm. My cats love it. Uh, so it's about one kilogram. I haven't weighed it. it it's what they were saying. Um, and I received it a week and a half ago, something like that. And I'm waiting on some news of my uh, the ship I adopted for this uh, year, with this upcoming year. I name her Wooly. And uh, uh, so I'm waiting for pictures and news. And once I receive news uh, from her, I, I, will, I will tell you. So um, this crowdfarming site that work with uh, Len Paysan and have, you know, work also with other farmers. And I will link, I will link it down below because it may be of some interest to you. I may you know, adopt an olive tree with the adoption fee, you get quite a bit of um, organic olive oil. Um, you can adopt orange trees or, you know, other kind of um, um, things that uh, farmers produce and that help them uh, continue to have um, a production with very, very strict environmental guidelines. And, uh, you know, it's one way, it's one way to support them and uh, have them continue to uh, offer uh, these ni nice products. So, um, yeah, that was a nice, a nice acquisition that uh, uh, I got, you know, some time ago and my cats love it. Uh, I'm trying to save it from them because of uh, their, you know, they kind of scratch. So I don't want them to, uh, uh, you know, tear it apart. Uh, and uh, yeah, that was very, very nice. And I'm waiting on some news from uh, the ship that I named Wooly. Okay, so um, I'm gonna move to some uh, patterns I bought. Uh, you will see in an, a further two videos from now what are going to be the guidelines for books and patterns. I am still going to go continue to buy books and patterns um, to support the creators also. Um, so I bought a few patterns because some, some of the creators are, so it's going to be a bit late whenever uh, this video is live, they were having uh, advent calendars with um, discounts uh, on the patterns. So I got a few of them. Some of them I did not get through the advent calendar. I just got it because I, you know, they talked about it at some point and I was already eyeing the pattern. So I said, okay, I'm going to get it. And I'm going to talk about the pattern in alphab alphabetical order because I do not recall in which order I bought them. So the first pattern is a vest. It's the Any Day vest from Lily Kate. 
and uh, uh, you will see next video I have some yarn I brought from the Pyrenees once again a very chunky heavy brown yarn from a fleece that is not at all very very little processed um, not dyed at all the dark brown color is the color from the ship um, and I have already knitted um, a jacket, the cool jacket, also from Neringa Roque, the pattern from her. And uh, I have enough for a vest. So uh, I was already, I had already my eyes on the any day vest. It's the right uh, yarn weight, I think. Uh, so I have to swatch and see if it is. But um, from Lily Kate, and she, it was part of her. Uh, advent calendar so uh, I think she had a discount on the pattern so I got this one uh, then I got the Avena sweater from uh, Jennifer Steingas I've already talked about that uh, a few podcasts ago um, I got it the day she released it um, I had already my eyes on this pattern for a long time I have a yarn in my stash I want to uh, knit with um, so um, the pattern with so uh, yeah I got this pattern once again a very beautiful color work for the yoke and it's an association uh, of cool uh, cooler and so it's a light beige white green maybe grayish white so a cooler white and a warmer gold uh, color. So I, I think I'm, I have in my stash something I want. I want. I need to swatch once again. Uh, associate the the color work on the pattern and and the background for the sweater. So yeah, I will. I will need that. Another pattern I got whenever it was released, as soon as I saw it, is the Brett scarf by Rastus. Um, the one that has this pattern that looks like origami folded paper and uh, uh, yeah I've already talked about it uh, quite a bit already um, I'm very amazed by these three-dimensional um, knit stitch patterns and uh, the fabric they produce so yeah I also think you know I know which yarn I want to use from my stash to knit it so yeah, that's going to be in a future cast on. Then I have uh, the Emsworth uh, vest, another vest from Isabel Kramer. Um, I got it not so long time ago, a few days back. And I, I know I had it with, uh, she had a one day or 24 hours or a bit of more than that. Uh, code to thank everyone for uh, 2021 um, so I got it at that time I, I it was not an, in my radar I had not seen it but um, uh, I like very much the look and the feel of it and the way some pictures were made where you have it under a formal jacket I like that look very much so I'm you know, I do not go to formal meetings, not that much anyway, because I don't want to travel too much uh, for work. I used to go maybe twice a, twice a week to Paris for meetings. Now I, I, I do all that online. So um, my dress code is a bit more relaxed. Uh, because of that but uh, I like this uh, this vest very much and I like the look and the feel of it and uh, so yeah the M, uh, Emsworth uh, vest pattern so uh, the Highland uh, Tristol sweater so I've already talked about it from um, uh, Karen Holbrook, sorry, <laughs> I, I, I had forgotten her last name, Karen Holbrook. And uh, um, the last pattern I got, so that was also part of Sari Nordland um, Advent uh, discounts. So she is offering, or she was offering, until the day you see this video, 
uh, every day a different uh, discount for a different pattern, one of her patterns. And the Rococo pullover was already in my queue for a very long time since it was released. It was released in June 2021. And as soon as it was released, I placed it in my queue because uh, I knew I wanted to knit the sweater. I did not have the pattern. I was just waiting for me to cast on the project and get the pattern at, the time, at that time. Uh, so I just took the opportunity. I think she's having a 24% discount. Uh, on her advent uh, calendar um, where every day she offers a new pattern, a new code for a new pattern. So I got the Rococo pullover at that time. So there you have it. It's a three, six, excuse me, it's six new patterns that I bought uh, on the last, during the last two weeks. So I'm set up for the next year with yarn and pattern IDs. So I guess um, now I just have to knit that. Okay, um, next and last, I'm gonna talk about uh, books. Uh, some of them you already know I have. Uh, for example, the uh, Worsted uh, book from um, Land Publishing and uh, La Bien Aimée. You've seen that book everywhere. I received it a week ago. Um, it's signed. It's a signed copy. I am very, you know, there is her card here. Uh, because I, I bought it from La Bien Aimée. So she signed it. I'm very pleased. I did not, I, I knew before I received it that it was going to be a signed copy. But I did not know when I uh, pre-ordered it. And I think I'm going to start with uh, the perennial sweater, which is from Noragon. Um, a very interesting construction where the front, you know, you have short rows that shape the front with this very beautiful uh, stitch pattern. And during the... Um, uh, the uh, uh, online uh, uh, event that uh, Amy had with all the designers from the book. Uh, Nora Gon, who designed this pattern, said uh, this pattern was not designed for the book itself. Uh, she had it, she had designed it at some point, but di did not use it. And uh, um, so, but she knew it was a very good design and she wanted to uh, use it you know, in a, in a sweater. And so she took the opportunity of uh, uh, Amy uh, asking her to design a pattern and she used it in that one. And uh, uh, you have also, I, I don't know if there are pictures. Yes, there is a picture from the back. So from the front, you have this very beautiful uh, lace that is a bit wider at the top. And you also have, um, the lace in, in, uh, that runs down the back. So, uh, yeah, I think the first pattern I'm going to be casting on from this book is going to be this one, the perennial sweater. This is what I'm saying now. Uh, we are on December 22nd. Maybe the day I cast on something from this book, um, it's going to be something else. And anyway, she has a cal going on. It's open now. Uh, where you can knit uh, any pattern from this book and you don't have necessarily to knit it with one of her yarns. I would love to knit one with one of her yarns, but I will most probably use one of my uh, stashed yarn. Another book I talked about uh, last week in my Woolly News series, and I said why I was going to, I wanted to buy this book, it's a Knitting for Radical Self-Care from uh, uh, Brandy Cheyenne Harper. Um, I bought the book more for what she talks about uh, rather than the patterns themselves. But whenever, you know, I was browsing the book and I was saying, do I want to need some, something? I think I will cast on this 
hat. So it's called Terran hat. So, you know, for people from Earth, we are all Terrans. And uh, uh, I wear berets a lot. Uh, I wear berets that I buy. Now I have a full collection of them in every, almost every color. Um, wool ones, but not, not knitted. It's uh, an actual uh, fabric. Um, with, uh, from a company that is a very, very old company in France that made this kind of berets. Uh, so I wear that all winter long and uh, um, I have this beret in mind and I have also uh, uh, the other uh, pattern from Madeleine Tosh, the beret pattern from her. The name escapes me, I'm going to write it down, I, I bought the booklet. Uh, and then, um, you know, one of, one of these two I'm going to knit, um, I'm going to start knitting uh, when, whenever my smaller projects uh, are finished, but you see I've just casted on one, so uh, it's going to take a little while. Okay, next uh, I received um, the uh, LEN uh, magazine, the number 13, so you have also has, have most probably seen all the patterns, they are online. And uh, um, there were previews. And I like this one very much. A very relaxed vest. How fun is that? You need a sweater and you don't have to go into the sleeve island. Mm. So it looks like a sweater without sleeves. So uh, it's kind of a unisex pattern. It's the cassis uh, pattern. Cassis is a black current. So I think I'm going to uh, be knitting that one. So uh, yeah, I'm on a vest trip uh, and maybe it's going to be a trend that I will develop for another uh, Woolly News uh, episode because I, I used to have the trend uh, um, uh, section segment in this uh, news, but I did not see many trends lately, so I omitted it, but maybe, maybe. Vests are a current trend and we'll talk about that uh, next time. So last book um, is from Alice Hammer. Alice Hammer, uh, she has many patterns on uh, Ravelry in English and in French. Um, she released a book which is called French Tricot. It's, a, you know, a play on word. And uh, um, a very very interesting book because in this book she talks about the producers or the mill or the companies that make yarn uh, their history how they came up you know if it is a very ancient tradition one and you know how people now run the company or if it's a new company and uh, uh, with pattern ideas from uh, this company, the yarn from this company. And what I have seen is the Olivette, it's a series, there is both uh, mittens and a hat. And uh, uh, Olivette is made, if I'm not mistaken, with... Uh, yes, some uh, uh, yarn from Wesson. Wesson is uh, in... Bretagne, in Brittany, in France. Uh, so uh, both ladies, they raise the sheep, they collect the yarn, they have it uh, washed, combed, and uh, maybe dyed, I do not recall. I, I, I read the article, maybe they dyed themselves or they have it dyed. Uh, I do not recall. I think they have it dyed. And then they sell the yarn in the store in uh, Bretagne. So it's boucle laine. And uh, yeah, this one is very, I think I have yarn in my stash for this pattern. And the book, you can read it even though you don't have any pattern in mind. You know, I've talked already about the filature fonti here. This uh, where the yarn I got for my son's Christmas presents, both scarves and uh, beanies. And uh, so, you know, there is a whole article about Fonti. Um, 
and interviews and where they talk with the people and the patterns with uh, their yarn. So here they have, um, here they have uh, um, a cardigan, which is called Romara. Okay. Um, so it's a book you can read the same one as the uh, Cheyenne Harper, uh, Brandy Cheyenne Harper one. You can read, uh, not necessarily to knit from it. Uh, in, Len, in Len also you have articles um, about people, some food. And um, I, I, I like this type of reading. I, I, I read that. Uh, I read them all and I read them over. Um, and these are the kind of books I like to have around me because they bring me joy and happiness. And uh, yeah, we need, we need to actively place happiness in our lives because it's not going to come all by itself. Especially in this period where it's the end of the year, so it's the end of our Western year. Maybe for you, it's not the end of the calendar year. New Year is at some different time. Uh, so maybe you do not celebrate. Maybe you do not celebrate Christmas or other kind of end of the year traditions. And so we need to actively place happiness in our lives. Um, especially at this time where if you do um, uh, celebrate the end of the year or some kind of traditions um, and you can't, you can't see your family, you can't be with them uh, or there are some difficult times for you, um, it's quite difficult to find happiness and place it in our life. In particular, in these moments where everyone celebrates um, a large part, a large chunk of the world celebrates. So, uh, yeah, I will be thinking um, of you and sending good vibes. Um, Amy is one of them. Um, there are other people I know who are in the same situation. I will be sending them, you know, all my good vibes and uh, all my good brainwaves over this period of time. I wish you a very happy uh, knitting for this end of the year. It's going to be in about a week and a half now that uh, the year is closing for me for a new one. And I, yeah, I wish you a very happy knitting for that period of time. I wish you, uh, maybe you go see your family and friends, even if you do not celebrate. It's a good time for that, to do that. And I will see you next week for my first installment of my yarn, No Buy Year, with kind of an inventory of what I have at home. I will see you at the beginning of the week after next um, for my guidelines and regulations. And uh, I will see you the first Friday of the year for a new uh, Wooly News episode. And in the meantime, I wish you happiness. I wish you warmth from other people. I wish you give warmth to them. And I wish your knitting brings you, brings warmth into your life. Happy holidays. And I will see you next time.